Hello, BookTube. This is a little out of the ordinary for my book channel. My only channel, of course. Um, Instagram last night, I posted like a screenshot of the uh, inaugural episode of Picard, Star Trek Picard. Um, had a few folks ask me for my impressions. So I thought I'd give you a little background on my own Star Trek history, my expectations for the show, and what I really thought about the show when I saw it. Um, so I do a lot of Star Trek books on here, on this channel. Um, I read a lot of Star Trek books, and I've watched Star Trek since its inception. Um, hence the color of the beard. <laughs> so, um, I have favorite series. I have favorite movies. Uh, my favorite series is the original series um, with uh, Captain Kirk, McCoy, Spock, uh, Scotty, uh, Uhura, Sulu, and the, and the lot, and Chekhov, and the, the list goes on. Wonderful storytelling. There's a reason why we have so many iterations of this uh, of this fictional world and it's been just as warped as uh, warp speed over time and it was visionary and it was um, I remember things that affected me as a young person popular culture can really change a young person's perceptions from that of their own parents or their own community um, and uh, Obviously, media is plays a huge role in that kind of socialization. So for me, certain things have stood out. I did. Infinite diversity and infinite, infinite combinations. In other words, take the diverse world, embrace it. It gives you strength. Um, the logic, albeit uh, a logic that was uh, fraught with peril for Spock, um, the relationships between the crew members um, and the loyalty and friendship and the fact that uh, there was um, the prime directive where you didn't interfere with another culture. So um, I learned a lot, looked up to and modeled some of my own life on that, that sort of behavior. We went into a, uh, a uh, spell where we had nothing. There was a lot of fan fiction. There was a lot. The novels became very important. James Blish with his uh, novelizations of the episodes. And then we had the animated series. And in time, movies, The Next Generation, which I was not as thrilled with. I thought the relationships between the characters lost some of that luster lost, uh, there's a little more self-interest, maybe it reflected the society, the views of society. I enjoyed Voyager, Deep Space Nine I liked. Uh, contrary to a certain group of Star Trek fans, I absolutely loved Enterprise. Um, and then um, of course, Discovery is out there. Mm, not a huge fan, and that's because of, and again, it reflects the time. Um, teamwork, and to me, was important in Star Trek. Having a common goal and a, an ethos of understanding, and uh, but that jury's still out. I haven't kept up with that series, and it would be very unfair for me to get too critical. So I will re-watch it. Um, these things are always a work in progress and good fiction on the screen or in books or uh, anywhere. Um, that, that's part of what you do. We revisit stuff at different times in our lives and maybe have a different perception. So... When I heard Picard, with Jean-Luc Picard from The Next Generation, was going to have a series, um, I decided, well, I, I will 
watch for it and I will watch the first night. But I was wary. I was expecting to be disappointed and hoping not to be. Um, I also found out at the time that Will Wheaton, who played Leslie Crusher, or Wesley Crusher, excuse me, that was a slip, was going to be uh, hosting a show afterwards called The Ready Room. And I like him. I think he gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes from Star Trek fans because of a character he played that he did not write. And uh, he's done many things with popular culture and science fiction since. He has an Instagram face, uh, page. I'm just having trouble with words today. Um, as many of you will know, I'm recovering from a little bit of an illness, so I'm, uh, you can probably see it in the cheeks here. So I'm a little off the game. But I was on the game enough last night to sit down and watch. And um, I'd like to give my first impressions. And for the most part, they're positive. And that's a wonderful thing. We're one episode in. Season one, episode one, aired last night on CBS All Access. Uh, because I have that, I do need to go rewatch Discovery and give it a chance. So uh, those of you who don't like it, comment. And those of you that do, comment also. And uh, um, I'll try to wipe the slate clean and start from episode one again and, and give it a view. But this is about Picard. So not my favorite Starship Captain, um, but not my least favorite. And... Um, so I didn't know what to expect. First of all, <coughs> excuse me, there's going to be a lot of that. I'm sorry. The opening music, and I do have here, I think I, I tried to put this so I'd have the names. Yes, the composer is Jeff Russo. Absolutely enjoyed it. And if you watch The Ready Room with Will Wheaton after, you don't watch it before you watch Picard. Because there's spoilers, and he says right off there. Um, I like the music and music's always been a big part of the history of Star Trek so um, I did I thought it was suited to the subject matter and, and the feel I've gotten off the, uh, the first episode which is called Remembrance so we start with Jean-Luc he's at his um, and that's Patrick Stewart wonderful actor um, he's at his uh, Chateau Picard, uh, Chateau Picard. He's, uh, he's in the French countryside. He's got a vineyard. Um, I guess he'd be in his 90s. <coughs> and um, he's not a, he's not a starship captain anymore, which is what we know him as. And he's um, he's he's a retired admiral. Um, there are dream sequences where we see data. I'm not going to give any spoilers here. I'm just giving you a general background. We have Romulans in his house. And the general story is that uh, Romulus was going to, um, Star was going supernova and they had to be moved um, in, a, in a massive evacuation. Um, of course, they've always been enemies of the, of, uh, the Federation, and um, Picard is put in charge of that years before this series takes place, and there's an intersection of that and how it goes wrong. Picard's given the Federation ultimatum, we got to do this or I'm gone, and they take him up on it, and uh, Data, and um, what happens to Data, and um, and how that leads to this adventure. And I'll leave it at that. A couple of things that I liked. Picard is already tired, not only of his situation, but of how he handled. There's a crisis, of course. You got to start the story that way, <coughs> and it brings out character flaw. Now he's strengths, you know, and he, he certainly does. But they they don't. He doesn't start at the 
in a spot like that. Number two, the challenge that comes is sort of unexpected and very interesting. Uh, the settings <coughs> are magnificent. If we'd had those for the original series, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And that's just the way the world is now. But they're wonderful. Um, we see Starfleet, we see France, we see it, the cities, we see the, but it's not overdone. It's there, It's you get it, and they don't probably you with it. Fast action scenes, and a lot of action on a physical level, on, on a person-to-person um, um, -person level. So it doesn't there's not a lot of info dump, dumping. If you're a fan of the next generation, you'll see these little pieces. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you where. You will enjoy them, but they're there and they go. So if you've never seen it, you don't have to dwell on it. it does add layers, layers of um, context. Even if you're not getting it, you can feel it. And, and that makes it a more real world. There's, there's a world building going on. And then I thought they ended on the note they should have. So um, my impression for episode one of season one, Remembrance, is quite positive. Um, and, I, and I'm glad for that. So shift from this the show to this uh, ready room with Will Wheaton. Um, he has Michael Shabon on and the director I can't remember how to say her, Hanel or Hanel, Hanella, I think it's Hanella Culpepper. Both of them, Will Wheaton talks to about how they put the show together. And I thought that um, on color and wanting to make uh, uh, of the film palette and wanting to make the series different than Discovery which I thought was interesting. And that, that Culpepper was really, really interesting. On. Michael Shabon on how do you deal with a 96-year-old man, which would, it's not the same as being 96 now. It, this is in the future, obviously, where lifespans are different, but you still get the point. How do you do that? How do you deal with that conflict of, well, maybe I walked away too quick. Maybe I, I've been sitting here wasting time. Now, everybody always thought that Picard was going to end up at Chateau of Picard when he retired, and that seems like the ultimate place for him to be, but it looks like his business isn't done. And then friendship. And we'll see some of that friendship, and I think that's a good focus for the show. And I like the fact that there's action sequence after action sequence, tension, not a lot of info dumping, thank goodness. And, and they may do that in the future, and I hope they don't. And then the character development. I was pleased. So um, we'll have to get Steve Donahue up here, um, and him and I can watch it together and go episode by episode and maybe hash out some differences or agreements. Um, I did want to throw this out there because I know some folks were interested. I do have um, hopes. Um, the jury's out. It's way too early. Um, there, was some, uh, there was some really positive signs, though. So let's give it a chance. Uh, not everybody will agree, and that's fine. Um, and uh, I, I, I will watch the next one, um, and I will... Uh, hope that they can maintain this and uh, we will see and that's the fun right let's see where Picard goes so a um, little bit of a for a booktube channel a little bit of a television series uh, review I guess not really a review but just orientation and I hope you all enjoy it and I'm gonna go uh, relax a little bit so thank you booktube